Um, so we're standing in Skanderbeg Square, which is the centre of the city um, and left the National History Museum, yeah. where we learnt about the absolutely unrelenting turmoil yeah. of Albanian history of Albania. since forever. So they go way, way back. So like 300,000 years ago or whatever it is that there have been people living in the area. But um, specifically, the Ilians were a very conquered people um, over their time predating Albania. Um, so the Roman Empire came in and then of course that split up into two in the about 300 BC or whenever, uh, 300 AD or whenever that was. Um, and then that became the Byzantinian Empire. So then they were under Byzantinian rule for a long, long time. Um, they had barbarians, the Slavs, the Bulgars, uh, Bulgars and all of that, those people coming in and uh, invading from time to time. Uh, but then the Byzantinian Empire folded and collapsed and then they had this beautiful period where they got to be a free Albanian state for quite some time. Now we're in Skanderbeg Square and Skanderbeg is potentially like the biggest personality, um, the biggest known, most known person in Albania um, from the 1400s. Now he was, uh, in, his family were in charge and con in control of Al Albania for a time. Um, he was actually an Ottoman and left the Ottomans to come here and rule. Uh, but what he's most known for is a hundred year war between the Albanians and the Ottomans in which they were able to keep the Ottoman Empire out um, for a hundred years. Uh, and he's well remembered for it. And it was just a small army, a 10,000 people strong army that was able to go in and um, attack Ottoman um, strongholds. And his ability to win fights was well renowned around Europe. Um, the Ottomans actually gave him the name Skanderbeg um, which is which means Alexander as a little nod to Alexander the Great because of his military prowess and strategy. When he dies, then they come under the rule of the Ottoman, as so many of the places in the Balkan do for like 500 years, yeah. um, up until 1912 when they finally claim independence. So it's like yay Albania. Um, <laughs> during this time, this is when the first Yugoslavia was established, and interestingly it didn't become a part of the first Yugoslavia or Yugoslavia for the rest of um, that period up until the turn of the 21st century. So it's an independent country, but again, it's still being, um, I suppose, like picked at by all of the yeah. surrounding countries. So Italy is really interested in it and took over parts during the Principality and the Kingdom of Serbia wants a little slice of it. Greece down south wants a little slice of it. So it's just being chopped up left, right and centre. It ends the Principality, it goes into a really short-lived um, republic and then an even sh uh, three years and then it goes into a uh, monarchy um, and then the Italians invade yeah. and take over under Mussolini, under Mussolini. Um, and so up until the middle of the Second World War it's under Italian rule um, and a fascist dictatorship takes over and then when uh, Italy capitulates, the Germans come in and <laughs> occupy mm -hmm. Albania. Um, so it's just a really mess. And at the end of the Second World War, they're like, you can all leave, everything's done, huzzah. But then it turns into a communist dictatorship. So it doesn't join Tito's Yugoslavia. It isn't occupied by the, like, the Eastern Blocs, mm -hmm. ruled by Stalin. But they do model this dictatorship. Um, have you... No, Enver... Hodja. Enver Hodja. Never heard of them. And it's such a brutal, brutal totalitarian dictatorship. You think about the Soviet Union. Stalin comes in and dies in 1953. This Enver fellow doesn't die until 1985. So arguably is as brutal as totalitarian, but longer living. And it doesn't stop until the end of the 1990s, this absolute reign of terror. We've left the, um, it needs to be said, we've left the National History Museum and um, everything that I've just told you, Tyler and I, we didn't really learn there. So it wasn't a really great museum. We did some like, we came out going, what, who, huh? Um, and so we did some quick research and kind of trying to piece it all together. Um, there just was all that really inconsistent information written in Albanian and English, so we couldn't really understand any of the, um, like, the, the displays, um, so I think that just some work needs to be done to sort of flesh that out more. Um, I want to know who wrote the description on Google because it says huge orthodox cathedral completed in 2012 featuring a 46 metre bell tower and showy nighttime lighting. <sighs> I enjoy that.
Lucky for us, Tirana is a really compact city and it's very accessible by foot. So we've just left the absolute guts of all the touristic stuff in the centre to come into the Pizarro e Re neighbourhood, which has a new bazaar. So we're going to have a look at some of the marketplace and get something for lunch. Not sure what yet, and get out of the rain. We've just left Bunk Art 2, which is a museum within a bunker in the centre of Tirana. Yeah. Uh, so during the communist regime and um, the Cold War, over 175,000 bunkers were built throughout the country in case of a nuclear attack or chemical yeah. warfare. Bombs and, dropped. And it turns out like none of them were ever used. But there's two in Tirana that tourists can come and visit. Um, one in the centre here, Bunk Art 2, and one um, mm. out, Bunk Art 1. So we visited this one first. And I went in expecting to learn about the construction of so many bunkers in quite a small, relatively small territory. Mm. And naively, because it says Bunk Art 1 and 2, I thought there were art installations um, that were maybe political in nature, but art nonetheless. We got neither of those things. Neither of those things. So there's a small introduction as you walk through, but then it turns out that it's a, this one is a big... Um, exhibition in all of the little bunker all the yeah. confined rooms yeah. about the police but the secret security police specifically the Sigurimi Sigurimi but it sounds very much like the KGB yeah very much the... secret police for sure so security state protection secret police so lots of torture um, complete violation of human rights mm. that there were prison camps all throughout Albania yeah. that people were dislocated um, that there was the border force controls that stopped people from getting in and out. Yeah, so uh, many of you will know that like Albania wasn't actually open to foreigners uh, for quite some time. Uh, not exactly sure when um, they opened the borders, but it was part of the regime sort of led by the Sigurimi to um, not allow foreigners in and foreign ideologies um, as a threat to the, uh, the communist regime here. Yeah, so super informative about those things in this small one, but hopefully bunk up one will be more informative about the building of the bunkers. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. You'll see sooner than us. These pricks at Millennium Garden charge just seven euro for a serving of guacamole last night, but I haven't seen an avocado in three months, so I treated myself. How's it going? We're here at Tirana Castle, um, and this was a Byzantinian castle um, of architecture. Um, been around for a long, long time, but in the 1700s, this uh, family, the Toptani family, took over. They had big ties to the Ottoman Empire and also to the West, um, and they used their influence um, and status to help drive this place as a cultural and influential centre here in Tirana. Let's go check it out. called Candy Cowboy. I think that we should probably go and see it. Okay. We weren't joking. Tyler loves sweets. He loves lollies or candy as it's known in the Americas. I'm more of a chocolate gal myself. Howdy. Go have a look. But don't touch or buy. So we don't need that shit. There's some kind of drama going on in there. What was the problem, drama queen? Uh, minimum on card. So I added to it to get to the minimum. Rather than just paying in cash? Yeah. Cash is precious. <laughs> what did you get? Um, um, I actually have been craving snakes for a while, so I got a couple of snakes. I know they're not going to be Alan's. A couple of little eggs and some orange slices. Mm, mm, mm. It's a really nice jelly. You sure you don't want to try it? Like, not only is it offensive, but anything that is orange or green or yellow in a lolly is outrageous. That's outrageous. Um, 
There's not a whole lot going on because it's Monday, what, 3.10. Um, but this is, what is this street called? It's Totani. Totani. It's just got lots of restaurants and little bars and we're here last night. It's got a great buzz about it. Mm. <laughs> still eating his lollies. The candy man can. You can take a sunrise. Drink a little dreams. Jesus God. <laughs> I don't know the words. You could be the bad guy in a horror film. <laughs> so mean. But I could be an award winning actress, that part is true. So we've just left the House of Leaves, all these leaves behind me. So the House of Leaves is a really important place in Albania. Um, it was the technical home for the Sigurimi. Sigurimi. So who were the secret police of Albania? Now, what we got to see is all their techniques and all of that that goes on here and, and also the persecution of people in Albania during this time. It's obviously a communist regime from the mid 40s through to 1991. Uh, and during that time, um, to keep the communist ideologies alive, uh, the Sigurimi made sure they monitored their, the people um, and any po potential political prisoners were captured and then imprisoned in concentration camps around the country. Uh, one thing to note, the House of Leaves is actually a really, really good and well set out museum compared to uh, National History Museum of Albania, which actually doesn't have much in the way of English. But this place, very well set out, lots of English, um, and a really easy one and a half hours I'll give it. And now we dine. Let's break up and then I can really be a cat lady. Now you can actually see a bit of the insides. This is lamb innards. Insides. Insides. It's lamb innards pie. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah like a quiche but with um, kidneys and stuff in it. And it is delicious. The richness of the innards comes through. You know, Danielle. How's that taste? Yeah, you got a bit of room. It's good. It's like domati, but with cabbage leaf instead. Wow. Yeah. It's like got a like lemony sort of yeah, jazz to it. It's warm, but it's like nice and fresh. And this looks just stressful. like roast lamb. That's all that is. It's like oven wood, wood fired oven lamb. That doesn't look like roast lamb. That looks like boiled. Delicious. That looks good. Give it a taste. Let me know what it's all about. That's really good. Yeah, how so? So juicy, falling apart, tender, and there's it, there's nowhere to hide. You can taste the lamb really, really well. There's no other <laughs> accompaniments, so you'd want it to be good, and it is. We just left Bunkart One on the outskirts of the city. It's our last stop in Tirana to finish off Tirana Rama. I just came up with that. Now I've been sitting on it. That's a lie. I've been sitting on it. Um, but it was really good. So mm. this one is enormous. This it's is heaps bigger. Heaps bigger than Bunkart 2. Um, it's where Hoja's. I still don't have my... Enver Hoja. Enver Hoja. I just... Because it's spelt with an X. It's where Hodger had his like mm. quarters in the case that they needed to come here, which they never did. So again, not a heap of information about the building of the bunkers, but mm -hmm. this displays like a museum um, about the communist regime, yeah. how it came into effect and what life was like under the communist regime, which I thought was really good. It's probably the best one that we've seen. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. Yeah. I'd agree with that entirely. Um, what I found most interesting was, that still just tripped me out, was just how isolated Albania was. Yeah. With everyone. Mm. Um, but also I picked up on there that all of their like relations during the time where people were coming and going during the Italian occupation, then the German occupation, Americans were really helpful and were like advocating for Albania to remain mm. a... Um, independent country which Until. I'm, I'm sure that they had you know alternative motives motives because they wanted it to be a democratic country mm. not after you know capitalist democratic society like the states but that um albania just completely rejected the americans and then modeled themselves off of a soviet style communism but then rejected 
the Soviets as well. So mm. when they were free and established... And Yugoslavia as well. Yeah, when they were free, they modelled it after for a time. Um, but then they were like, no, we don't want to have relations with the Soviets. We've obviously rejected the um, Americans. Mm. We've rejected Tito's Yugoslavia. And then they turned to China and they became powers of China. And this is where it's most related in that China funded the building of most of the bunkers, 175,000 throughout mm -hmm. Albania, mm -hmm. and gave them materials to do that. But then they turned against China as well. So it's just they didn't want anything to do with anyone, which I mm. can't understand, I guess, because of their long history of people just wanting to yeah. come in and tear the country to pieces. And you, um, you can sort of understand why um, the government at the time, after World War Two, made the decisions that they made. Um, with all the, the ongoing centuries and centuries and centuries of invasion. Um, yeah, so for me as well, um, we, we say that there's not much about the construction of the bunkers here, but um, they do have a memorial in there for um, the construction workers that lost their lives during the construction of these 175,000 bunkers around Albania. Um, and like, it really struck a chord with me. Like, it really um, just reminds me of um, teammates of mine that have passed away underground. Um, it's just so so similar in that way um, and the memorials and things like that that we set up at our mine site so yeah yeah really touched the chord to be honest um, and then in complete opposition juxtaposition to that is that the entire bunker mm. ends with a room about bats um, and how at the end like we've been there for two hours <laughs> at the end there's a room about bats that says that's a um protected animals all throughout Albania and are really important um, and they're found in the tunnels because of the environment and uh, but don't worry about it so like, cool thanks for the information at the end <laughs> yeah thanks for watching guys that's another episode of never not in the books if you liked what you saw here please Click this little link on my so I'm nodding to it, um, for more content just like that. And uh, check us out next week when we get to Skoda. And the check Albanian out the Alps. Alps and the lakes. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next time on Never Not. <laughs>